You know, something about Long Black Veil that really struck me was the treatment of um, love and in middle age, which is still really unusual in I fiction. I know, yeah. Um, and so I don't know if you thought about that. Um, well, yeah, we had the sense in, in, in fiction I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of the same problem in in Hollywood of, of finding older characters, mm -hmm. unless they're Jack Nicholson. Um, it's very hard, to, uh, especially to find f to see women, older women in fiction. Right. I mean, if it's um, Jack Nicholson, it's Jack Nicholson with a nineteen-year-old right, girl. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But here we have Judith, the main character, who finds love at a at a late age. We have Judith, and we also have um, Judith's ex. Uh, whose name is Rachel, who has lost or thinks mm -hmm. she's lost this one great love of her life. Yeah. And she's waiting for, she's hoping there's another love in her life, but it's not clear whether it's going to come. And yeah, I, I kind of sometimes resent the way um, adolescent culture has hijacked our sensibility of love. Mm -hmm. um, and I celebrate. I celebrate adolescent culture. <laughs> I, I mean, having played in lots of rock and roll bands, I would be a fool not to. But um, I think there are all kinds of love, and and um, if you're lucky, you are in love when you're 90, if you should live so long, and mm -hmm. the person you love lives so long. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I was really happy to write about that. I hope, I hope that, um, I'm glad you noticed that. And you have a great sympathy for Jake, the, the fireman who yeah. Judith marries. This is a, a, was a real challenge for me, because Jake is a character who, uh, he's, he's a main fireman, he's actually he's based on several people that I know um, and he doesn't have you know he's a, he's a working class guy he doesn't um, have a, a kind of vast knowledge of, of gender studies mm -hmm. um, he's been married to the woman that he loves for uh, 15 years or more uh, and um, when he finds out that um, that she's trans he mm -hmm. finds out that she has a past that he doesn't know about. Um, it it uh, it's a real challenge for him because he knows he loves his wife and he knows his wife, and yet suddenly it's as if he doesn't. Mm -hmm. So he has to find out what does it mean to be in love. And um, I always say that you know that the vows are always I, uh, Jennifer, take thee, Susan. Um, you know, to, to love, honor, and obey. And we always think that lo the loving and the honoring and the obeying is the tricky part. But the tricky part is really the the. What if, what if the person that I'm pledging my love to turns mm -hmm. out to be someone other than I thought? And mm -hmm. what, would, what would make that person different? What mm -hmm. part of their history could change for me to suddenly think it's a different person? And how long ago would that history have to be? Right. I mean, one of the things you, it's a key question in the book is about the nature of long, of long relationships and change. And, um, you know, you say, um, how does any relationship survive in the end when change is the only constant? You know, how much could the person you love change and still remain the same person to who you've made your promise? Right. If you are married to the same person at age 65 that you married at age 25, your marriage has probably failed. Mm -hmm. Probably. Um, because, you know, we change, and we change in uh, other than just physically. Uh, we change in, in our passions. We change in the things that we, that we care about. Um, we start as, as single people, and then we're married people, and then we're parents, and then we're parents of children and adolescents, and then we're the parents of adolescence and then the adolescents are gone mm -hmm. um, and then we're grandparents mm -hmm. and all those you know, those are very different kinds of people to be mm -hmm. um, and especially as we become older people so how do you find you know when you pledge your love to someone at 25 you're not pledging your love in the hopes that that person will be unchanged at age 90 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least I hope not um, and yet, if and yet, when you want when a really dull life. <laughs> well, when people change, sometimes sometimes people change in ways that we that we think wrecks the deal. Mm -hmm. So people can suddenly lose their faith, or they gain faith, mm -hmm. or um, uh, they the passions that you shared suddenly one of them just doesn't like that thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you you married a deadhead, and suddenly they're completely into you know 
disco classical or, or, or classical or rap <laughs> or something. Um, and it's like, wait, you don't love Jerry anymore? It's like, no, I don't want to talk about Jerry. I want to go to the grave without hearing the name Jerry Garcia again. Um, and you're like, well, is my marriage in trouble? <laughs> so um, all of these are the questions that I love. Did, is this, are you, are uh, you I, drawing a I, real experience I, here? <laughs> <laughs> why, why no? What makes you think that? <laughs>